<laughs> there's like um what's it called like there's been people that they'll have their homes raided because they have a knife in their home in england and i heard about that because a law changed in 2021 about like offensive weapons act or something like that that you're not allowed to... and i went oh i'm gonna throw a few away <laughs> oh no i've been the lot i know none of the none of the really cool ones because some of the cheap ones were a bit like i don't know they could have a problem with that because there's like there's a really dumb law, or at least how it's written in England, is like you can't have zombie knives, is the actual thing. Okay, and I don't know that this is. It's basically like, the, <laughs> but everyone in England was like uh, trying to get like really big knives, like machetes and stuff, or this like serrated edge, like stuff that looks tactical and all that. Mm -hmm. And uh, they banned something like that. And then everyone found a, a way around it by like, if they're marketed as zombie killer knives, then it's something that's not like imposing harm to other people. So they got around with that and now they had to make a law for that. I don't mm. know. You guys weird knife laws. I yeah. Wait. America's tough because every state has its own knife laws. It's usually done at that level. And then it, yeah. it just makes it really hard to know. Like there isn't this common knowledge that people can share. Because they'll mail them to you regardless. Mm. Yeah, I have had trouble before getting uh, mm. out the front knife mailed to me. I think it's legal to own, but not to buy. It's weird. Yeah, it, that makes sense because with that, with that, you're probably getting an expensive product from a like a company that doesn't want to get in trouble. But if mm. you were to buy like brass knuckles from a magazine or something, where do you want it sent, sir? <laughs> where would you like your paperweight? Alaska, <laughs> Hawaii? We don't care. Okay. Um, th there's lots of that. I remember my my cousin always had a uh, flapjack or whatever. Oh, the like thing. That. Yeah, yeah. It's like a wiggly with a weight in the. Can yeah. you show a flapjack, Zach? Like a, it's like a leather little handheld whomper that you you see cops have them in old detective like uh, uh, movies and stuff like that. It's you can just knock the fucking shit out of somebody with something you can carry around in your pocket, basically. I, maybe I ran with a weird crowd, but like having some sort of club type weapon in your car was kind of standard when I was in New Jersey. Yeah, I grew up with an axe handle um, in mm. my truck all the time. Um, you know, well. Yeah, my friend yeah, carried a flapjack, which his was leather with a like a lead weight in it, and you could see yep. the stitching around the side like a belt. This one looks looks uh, like more something modern. from Etsy. That looks a little beyond our time as well, but I, the one Woody described is exactly it was even flat. It reminded me mm -hmm. of, a, of a belt that he would double back on itself, and uh, but in the middle, was, I think there was even a spring. Uh, that the, looks very close to what my very friend close. had. Yeah. Yeah, you fuck so. somebody up with that. Like, at close Dude. range, you just need to give him a little flick of your wrist and a little bit of arm movement, and you've stunned the guy so badly, you, he'll do whatever you want after that. I acknowledge it doesn't look like much, but if you were to hit your own palm with it, you'd be like, oh, my goodness, I'm so glad I didn't do that to my skull. Hard. It's it's as solid as it gets. It's so fucking hard. Yeah, and, and police batons are like that, too. The old wooden ones with the handle at the side. It... <laughs> It's hard to describe hardness sometimes. I've often said, like, it, when you fall on ice, it can seem harder than concrete somehow. Like, it's mm -hmm. just really, really hard and solid. And uh, the policeman's baton is that same thing. Like, it's harder than you think. It's wood, but I don't know what they do to it, but it's something different. Falling We're talking about ice. beating people? What kind of weapons we prefer? <laughs> it is hard. Yeah. Have you when ever I... had a beating weapon in your car? Like, just because you thought it was a good idea? Oh, like as a plan? No, I don't think so. What about by the bed? Uh, I have before, but I feel like guns are the move. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just Google better. says ice is harder than concrete. Oh, wow! According to <laughs> fucking Google, yeah, I got a finely calibrated back of head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a yeah. guy gave me one of his like we had a plumber around who was this like war veteran he gave me a knife which was a whole different thing but he said like mm. yo i told him i was into knives and he gave me this knife he was like and my dad was there too and he said like do you want something so he went out to his truck and he pulled out like it's basically like a cut off bit of hose that he dropped molten lead into the end of so it'd be like mm. this lead ball at the end of a wiggly little hose pipe thing yeah, and we collectively went. Okay, that's you can't you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that. No, no, it's a no, weapon. No. Anything you you can't if it's if you can think of it as a weapon, you're probably not. You had to get rid of his fancy knives. Oh, so. that's absurd. They need ah. they need a touch of freedom. 
What if you know what I would do? Like, like you're, you're you're a well-to-do gal. You could probably get some sort of like historical collector's license or something, right? And you could have like real rapiers mm. and uh, broadswords and whatever you wanted. Like, it seems like if you go that angle, that's it's that's what rich people usually do. Oh, it's it's a collection of antiques. Those are mm. that's not that's not an arsenal of weapons. That's my collection of <laughs> antiques. There's the rules for that. There's yeah. a, what's it called? There's a there's a law in England that's something like before if you buy a samurai sword that was made traditionally before 1957, you can do whatever you want. You can just have that. No, oh, <laughs> those matter. are probably the good ones anyway. I mm -hmm. imagine. Like you don't want some what like want. like some bullshit like made in Kentucky weeaboo. I think thing. you do. I I genuinely mm -hmm. like like I've done no research into this, but. Mm -hmm. My understanding is that the reason they folded the, that Japanese steel so many times, they, oh, we folded a thousand times. Wow, it must be so pure now. Yeah, it is. Is because they they started with like shitty ore, like like they, they were trying to get the impurities out of their shitty ore, but with like European iron ore, like it's not necessary oh. to fold that many times. I read that anyway, but I don't I don't want that katana anyway. That that's man, you look like a loser with that katana, dude. You know it's true. Like white man can't own katanas. I, I, you, you, you either get yourself a European sword or a Roman sword. You stick with your your heritage. I think you that's want some poser sword. Yeah, get yourself a gladius. Get yourself a claymore. Something big. Maybe a Confederate like uh, like, like sword. Mm, like like what they have. Yeah, That'd, that they probably had a saber. Uh, maybe because you brought like a like a cavalryman's saber. Ooh, he's got. Or sting. you could get sting. Oh, yeah. Is that a gladius? That's it's, sting. That that's is sting. That is Frodo's oh. sword. Yeah, yeah. And Bilbo's that's, before him. That's and awesome. Before, I love that you, know you have owned, that right there. Who, I know. Who who it it glows blue Bilbo. when orcs are near. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> does it? Does it have anything glowy about it? No, sadly, I got the okay. ring in that. And it's, it's pretty cool. It's that's sick. Don't move. stop there. It's cool. More <laughs> 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 Lord of the Rings shit. Get the Witch I, King I, helm. You know, I still haven't seen Lord of the Rings. I, 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 it's it's a lot. I don't know how many hours there is. I I'm so sorry. How many hours? <laughs> Who buys one? Sting? I haven't <laughs> seen Lord of the Rings. Someone sent it me. Someone sent it me. It was a big fan. Oh well, then like should, I owe it to him. Movies. Really? Yeah, you got to watch the movies. You'll enjoy it. The I, movies it, are actually good. You can get this other thing for like a tenth the price. That's ninety five percent as good. Like, ah, yeah, okay. But I'm still worried that thing's gonna rape my ear hole, and I'm not gonna that, like it. That's my experience with audio stuff. But somewhere around two hundred to four hundred dollars, you get something that's really good. And then if you go from four hundred to four thousand, it's five percent better. Yeah, yeah, that it's like that with a lot of things. I think it's like mm -hmm. that with a lot of gun shit. Uh, my dad called me yesterday. He, he was he was um he's got an upper an AR fifteen upper, and he's like I'm I don't have a lower for this, and I'm like yeah the popo may have taken that one away. <laughs> like all right, well, I'm gonna go buy an AR fifteen lower. What do you recommend? I'm like whatever's fucking cheapest that's still made of metal. Like, what are you going to do with it? It's not like you're going to go to war or shoot, like, tactically or, or any of that shit. You just want a gun that works. What and, part of uh, the gun is responsible for its reliability in an AR-15? Is, is that a real question? Um, well, I, reliability can mean a lot of things. I suppose if it were direct impingement versus piston-driven, um, you can have some give and take. But that's more the mechanism difference in the gun. One of those is, is usually more reliable than the other. Uh, the parts kit and the lower, I suppose, like, like, but man, reliability, like, what are we even talking about? Like, like if we shoot it without cleaning it, when, when it will stop or like if we shoot 10,000 rounds through all three of these rifles, which ones in, has failed the most at the end of it? I, I don't I just, even know. Yeah. They all kind of work. I, I, I had lowers when I made machine guns, um, you're taking a lower and you're converting it to full auto. And you do that by dropping a little a little part. You drill an extra hole in it um, before you drop that other part in there. And all of that is very, very cheap. Like the parts, like $40. I bought it at Knob Creek off a bench. They're, they're legal to buy, or at least they were then. So I didn't want to ruin an expensive lower, so I used these plastic lowers, polymer. Like the whole bottom of the gun is just plastic. And that meant you didn't even need to use real tools. So I took a DeWalt power drill and drilled the hole for the, uh, the extra pin that goes through it. That... That was the machine. If you ever see me shooting an M4 in a in a video, like a fully automatic M16 of some kind, it's that plastic hundred and twenty five hundred fifty dollar lower, mm. chewing through the cheapest ammo I can throw into it, and they never fail. They never fail. That's nice. I've had a couple of guns that were unreliable for their first few hundred rounds, and yeah, at this point, I think I'd pay a premium 
to know that it'd be reliable out of the gate. One of the things I've noticed um, with pistols that can be true, especially tactical short, shorty compact pistols, mm -hmm. those springs need to be broken in um, because it, they sort of fine tune how much spring that you know you need to have the slide come all the way back, but not too hard. You don't want it bottoming out and slamming back, but you also want it to come all the way back so it cycles the next round, grabs that next round, even in scenarios where maybe it's a little underpowered or your pussy gripping the gun, not holding it quite well enough. So you need to break that spring in sometimes before it, it'll short cycle some. It'll, you'll get uh, you'll get misfeeds. I think that's exactly what happened. Smith & Wesson M&P 9 full size needed hundreds of rounds. I also yep. had a shotgun that just didn't operate smoothly until you didn't even have to shoot it that much, but you had to shock a lot. So it was rack a lot of rounds through it to get it to yeah. work smoothly. Yeah. And just, you know, knocking the high edges off things and getting some carbon buildup mm -hmm. on some parts. A lot of people, um, or I always found that there were two schools of people, and one of them didn't believe in using lubricant on AR-15s. Um, they just felt that the carbon buildup was enough lubricant, and you could just dry lube them forever. And th they would mm. be like, this is my AR-15. It's never had a drop of oil in it. I've shot 8,000 rounds through it so far. Like, no you know, no failures or, or no issues or whatever. So I don't know what reliability even fucking means with, with guns. If you buy a piece, AR-15s are just well-made. It's a good design. There are guns that are designed poorly, and it doesn't ma matter how well you make them, they'll fail a lot. But I never had any issues from ARs. They always just work, work, work. Okay.